welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new today i'm going to be talking to you about this this is my walking stick apologize for that tiny little dot there it's my plant <laughs> you could just see the tiny little dot um so yeah i'm gonna leave it like that this is my walking stick um it's a foldable one i basically got it to use when i'm in pain if that makes sense um basically for Disneyland. I have been having a lot of problems with my knee, this was last year, um, and basically the doctors think I have fibro, I've not been diagnosed with it, and with my knee, they're not too sure what it is, I've had a few, um, I've had a few people mention it's fibro, um, give me other conditions like arthritis, but that could be caused by my fibro, or I can be both. And then something called, is it Britaitis? Basically when these little sacs um, swell around your kneecap. I think it's called Patella Britaitis. I don't know how to say it properly. So there's been lots of things that, there's lots of things that the doctors told me that it could be, but I've not been diagnosed with anything. I've actually, um, I am referred to the hospital through a rheumatologist who specializes in joint, muscle, nerve pain, and hopefully get a diagnosis through them. But yeah, basically for the past few months, it's been since probably summer that I've really, really struggled with my knee. Previously struggled with my foot this on the same side as my knee. Um, basically the tendons weren't supporting it very well, so I couldn't wear particular shoes. I couldn't walk for long distances anyway, just because my ball of my foot would swell. It kind of, you know like when you wear heels and you've got that much pressure on your ball of your foot and it starts to burn? Um, that's what it's like with me if I start walking too long, even if I've got flat. Um, shoes on and yeah the ball of my foot swells or sometimes it feels like I'm standing on a rock that there's like a rock stuck in my shoe but there isn't um, so yeah I've had a lot of problems with that leg um, but yeah basically I'm going to go through when it first started um, and the experience that I had first using it and the reasons why I had reservations about it and basically everything like that I when I first thought about using um, a walking stick was a few months back um, it was mainly because of Disneyland because Disneyland is a lot of walking a lot of moving about and I was worried that I'd make the experience not as good because I'd be complaining about pain or I wouldn't be able to do something that the kids would want to do well I wouldn't be able to do something that the kids want to do um, chasing them around and stuff like that and physically be able to do it um so my concern was basically making the kids time there just not as great um so i looked into it and i went on youtube and i searched i wanted to know what it'd be like for a mum with a walking stick or a mum with a mobility problem that is still able to walk which is very limited of what they could do i found nothing i couldn't find i just wanted like a vlog like a day in the life or even just like a sit down video I found a sit down video explaining about a walking stick, the reasons that she used it and things like that. That was two years ago and there might be more out there but I just could not find them. Um, there's loads out there to say how to walk with a walking stick but I wanted people's experiences and the background of it just to kind of know what it'd be like for me. Um, so yeah, I did a lot of research into it and I thought, you know what, let's just get one for Disneyland and put it in my bag. So I got this one. I got this one from Amazon. Um, I wanted it to be pretty, so it's got like a floral pattern on it, black, so it's not too bright and out there, but then it's got this lovely, like, silver, it's got a lovely gold, silver, um, floral flowers and stuff like that on it. Um, all intentions of just folding it up and using it as and when my knee started bothering me. Right, so we got into Disneyland, um, we drove there, so that was quite painful anyway. Um, I did the most of the first driving, just because I'm not that good driving with my bad knee anyway, um, but it's not just driving that hurts, it's just normal, regular sitting down that hurts. If my knee is not straight, um, and it's been bent for a while, then it can cause a lot of pain but it seizes up and I have to like force it straight which is very painful to walk on it, anything like that. So yeah, I wanted to drive the first big bulk um, just so then after that I could rest and I knew that even though I'd be resting my knee would still be hurting. So I made sure, I don't like driving when I'm on all my medications. There's some medications I have to take daily, there's also medications that I take when I'm in pain. Um, 
the basically when I'm on all of them, the strongest I can possibly be on, I don't like driving on that. Um, just because I don't, even though it's still safe for me to drive like that, it's not like I'm completely out of it and I can't concentrate. I just, because I feel different, I don't want to drive and I don't want to put that, you know, risk there, even though obviously nothing's going to happen and I can technically still drive on them. But yeah, I just choose not to when I've fully on all the drugs that I can possibly take. Um, so yeah, he drove the last half when we actually got to Disneyland. The first day there, I didn't really, we didn't really do much because we were there fairly late anyway. The park was only open for a couple of hours. Um, we looked around, went on a ride and then came back and had food. The first full day there, um, because I have problems with my shoulders and my arms, strangely enough, I can't actually sit for long periods of time, but I also can't stand for long periods of time. It's very strange um, just because of the way I stand. So... Like if I, I can remember going to the first time it's, I realised I can't stand for long was when I went to a party, um, a family friend's party and I was stood up and there was no seats or anything and I was stood at the bar and I was like I can't stand anymore um, because my shoulder blades would be on fire um, and I try and like even when I'm sat down for long I try and sit back and like forcibly like stick my, my shoulders back and sit straight but it doesn't just do anything at all. Um, so I had the, basically the proof that I couldn't stand for long. Um, so we went into, I think it's called the City Hall, um, and I said to him, basically, I have a thing, because I have a hidden disability, I have a thing about what people think. <laughs> um, because f physically, right now, you can't see nothing wrong with me, and physically then, you couldn't see anything wrong with me. So. I didn't like the fact that I'd get to go into the accessible queue for people that there's a wheelchair marker right there thinking I'm not in a wheelchair um, people are going to think oh why is she in that queue or she gets to go in front of us or something like that and I didn't like that thought so I said to the other half I'm going to get my stick out and I'm just going to go in there with a stick because I feel a little bit more comfortable that you can physically see that there's something wrong rather than me just giving them a sheet saying I have this wrong and I don't physically look like there's anything wrong. It's really bad but I've seen signs everywhere now that says some disabilities are hidden. Obviously be aware of that. Um, but you know people, they think there's nothing wrong with the person even though there could be tons and millions of things wrong with the person. And that's what I was scared about. Um, so I got this accessibility pass, which means I could go through the, 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 either the exit or wherever there was a wheelchair marker, that's where I'd go in. Um, as soon as I left the hall, I put my stick away, um, walked, and we went to the first ride, which is the carousel. Um, the other half was like, oh, it's only a five, 10 minute queue. Let, let's just go in the normal queue rather than disabled queue. Um, which that's what we did because yeah that was the first ride we went on when I had the pass and I was stood there for five minutes and I'm like I can't do this really can't do this and then the next minute this young girl came in probably similar age to me probably younger with a walking stick and she went straight into the accessibility entrance sat down and just waited for obviously her to get on and I'm thinking why can't I just do that um, we went onto the carousel, I couldn't go on a horse because I can't put a lot of weight on the, my left leg um, and I didn't want to kind of like either use one leg to swing around and then obviously, you know what I mean, I didn't want that risk of being in more pain. So I went on a carriage and the kids went on a horse um, and I just sat there and I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just getting my stick out. So soon when the carousel started going, I got my stick out and I was like, right, I'm using it. Um, it took me a while to get used to walking with it. I'm still, even now, months later, I still haven't got it to a T, depending on what's going off around me. With kids running around, it gets knocked. I'm like, you've got to be careful because I'm putting my weight on this stick and I will fall. Um, yeah, so I'm still kind of getting used to it in some circumstances, especially ups and downs. You're meant to use your good leg, um, your bad leg when you step up. Your good leg when you go up and your bad leg when you step down, like the first leg you put forward. Um, and I'm still getting used to that and I know when I'm getting used to that because I'm like, ow, yeah. Um, and I started using this stick and I thought, right, now I'm using my stick, I'll start going the accessibility part. And the small 
difference that it made was crazy. Um, I had, we went on a Buzz Lightyear ride for example and the man there just says, do you want me to, it's basically like, I'm going to put my hand there's basically like you got the queue and then your little bus thing and they're going around and then you've got kind of like a treadmill, a long treadmill and I didn't realise but when he says do you want me to slow it down for you, me thinking the actual ride um, but he meant the treadmill part and I was like no 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 I should be fine and then as soon as I got on it I almost fell <laughs> and then I was like maybe this should be slowed down for me and I didn't realise that I needed that until then. Um, yeah so after the first day I just says to the other half I cannot believe how much of a difference the walking stick makes I thought it would be one of those that would be like you know what it was not going to make that much difference and then I realised as well that it's probably best that I use it now before I get in pain rather than when I'm actually in pain to you know to prevent pain rather than be in it and then use it to aid me after and um, yeah I loved it I don't didn't feel right using it and I do not like the questions even now and um, we bumped into some friends some of his friends there and they was like oh what are you doing to your leg and I was like <laughs> I just don't know how to answer it because I haven't got an answer to what's wrong with my leg I know I've got a bad knee and a bad foot but that is all I know and I don't feel comfortable expressing that and talking to people about it because I don't I feel like I'm lying um, even though the doctors think I have fibro and they've been saying that for the past four years I don't feel like me saying that I have fibro to somebody it's not the truth because I've not been diagnosed with it it's it's really hard to explain um but yeah I started using it and I absolutely loved it and the first time I didn't use it was on the way home we drove back a couple of days later and at the service station um I would basically get out and be like right who needs a toilet I'm going to go to the toilet um, either take the kids with me or leave in the car depending on what they want because we'd stop quite often and I went into the service station to go to the toilet and literally we was parked near the entrance I got out of the car or went to the entrance and then I was in agony and I'm like how can I be in agony when I've only walked maybe a metre two metres um, without a stick when I was at Disneyland and I was okay most of the time walking because we'd because we'd be walking, stopped, sat down, walk in, stopped, sat down, that type of thing. It was fine. Um, I was fine with it. But, yeah, I didn't use it. And I said to the other half, I have to use the stick now. Because just going to the toilet, walking a couple of metres, I was in agony. And then I was limping the entire time after that. Because I just couldn't walk. And I was in so much pain. Um, and then I said, you know what, I'm going to use it. And then... We came back and I had the weekend obviously to get the house sorted and then it was Monday and I was like I can either go to school and be in absolute agony or I can just pluck up the courage and just use it. So that's what I did. I went you know what just try to ignore people because I didn't want the attention. I hate getting the attention of people um, about things. I'm a very anxious person especially when it comes to like socialization and speaking to people and that was a lot to deal with when people would come up to me and say are you okay or I know they were just you know wanted to be there for me and be nice but I struggle with that um and yeah I mean I had one person came up to me and asked me if I was okay and I was like yeah I've just got a bad knee just kind of went from there <laughs> um but then I, I know what it's like sometimes in the school at school playground, sometimes kids, I know kids can gossip sometimes but it can be a lot with parents and I was worried that that would happen and people would be like, or questions would ask to my kids, why is your mum wearing a walk, using a walking stick when she's not old? That's the, my thought because to me, I've only seen elderly people wearing, walk, wearing walking sticks, using walking sticks. And then since I started using it, I noticed a lot of people actually using walking sticks that were younger, like me. Um, I just never noticed before. Um, and yeah, I used it for the school run. And basically within a space of a month, things were getting worse where basically since Disneyland I couldn't physically walk without a walking stick out and about because I can't walk far at all with without it and then it got to the point where even with it 
I couldn't walk long distance. So now, for example, I really struggle walking long distances. Um, and it was very difficult for me to kind of express that and ask for help um, because I think that's one big step in using a mobility aid is because it now can be seen well even when it weren't seen when it weren't seen I could get on with it even if I was in pain and no one would be coming up to me and asking for help and I just got on with it it was strange people coming up to me and asking for help or if they'd see a door they'd open it for me when before they didn't they might hold the door open if they're coming through but then now if I'm walking towards a door someone will just open it or well, not all the time but that can happen um just because you can see I've only got one hand because the other hands with a walking stick and I'm getting this help that I'm not used to and for me um I was very independent and like pride about that and then since using an aid and then obviously asking for help it was very very difficult for me even now my eyes are welling up <laughs> to accept that, that I need help. But what made it worse is when I did get that help, I felt so bad. <laughs> for example, because it started getting really difficult for me to walk distances, um, I didn't like to be one of those that parked really close to school because when you park really close to school, you block roads. So I park quite far from school. It must be at least, I don't know, 20, 30 meters. Um, really say that's quite far but yeah it was instead of it being on the street I'd park the street away or the two streets away where it was a bit quieter but it got to the point where like I said I couldn't walk much with a walking stick after a bit where I'd walk to school get them and then they'll walk back or the walk to get my son after my daughter I was just in complete agony and I found it so hard and I just was like I can't I can't do this but what makes it worse is I have to hold myself back for the kids as well so they were running around and being crazy and I'm like right stop running off I can't walk very far and I felt really bad on the kids um, so I eventually rang school and asked if I could park in like, the little parking lot and I could but as soon as I did I was so grateful that I was able to, I'm able to park in the school parking lot but at the same time I felt really bad thinking somebody else might need that space but I'm using it and it was really hard for me to accept that and even afterwards like my sister-in-law would say to me but you need that as well and I'm like yeah but someone else might need it more and it's a battle that I have in my mind ever since um which is insane which I didn't quite get because I thought mobility problems and disabilities were just disabilities and then I realized all the mental stuff that you have to go through behind it and deal with it it's kind of like I'm a very well I was a very adventurous crazy person um when I was younger I used to run a lot I used to do ice skating horse riding like judo um gymnastics and like I said, I used to run for school. I used to love sport. It, for me, it was always drama and sport was my main thing. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And then there's certain things I had to give up with my arms or at least ease out of because of my arms. But for me, I still had my legs, like with gym. I, still, I could still do spin. I could still do things for my legs. And then now that I can't really do much with my arms or my legs, I'm kind of stuck um which is really bad but yeah so at the minute well I'm kind of getting out of it I suppose but I went through a stage of really struggling with kind of like feeling sorry for myself but then I'd like feel like I want to smack myself around the head and be like what are you doing <laughs> um like dancing on ice for example I love dancing on ice and I love ice skating I went through when you're younger you can go through certain stages and I was hit the 10th stage which was the final stage and then you choose whether you want him to do like dancing the version of it or if you want to do the whole spins and you know jumps and stuff and I hit that and then yeah I love loved ice skating and when I watched Dance on Ice I sat there and thought I can't do that ever or 
thinking about going for walks with my kids, thinking I can't do that anymore. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> what am I saying? I can still walk. I can still enjoy moments with my kids. They have to be a little bit different. Then I was like, why am I feeling sorry for myself when people out there are in a lot worse situations than what I'm in? I didn't want this to be a sad thing. <laughs> um, but it was difficult for me to think, I do this with my kids, I do that with my kids, I can't do them, or I'm gonna have to find a way around it. And as well, accepting the fact that if I do something big, like I know that if I go to Disneyland again, more than likely I'll need a wheelchair because I can't barely walk that far anymore without a lot of pain and I wouldn't want to sit there with the kids every five minutes sitting down because it's just getting worse. Um, I spoke to somebody on Instagram who also has fibro and she has problems with her knee as well. I think she has arthritis in her knee too. And I said to her how to deal with it mentally because that's what I'm really struggling with at the minute. Feeling sorry for myself and then thinking how can I do this, that and the other and then slapping myself around the head going, you should be grateful. Um, and then feeling bad for myself again because I'm moping and feeling sorry for myself. And she said it's okay to grieve the things you can't do no more. And I was like, right, perfect. <laughs> I can grieve because I can't do those things no more and it's okay to be mad at myself. But... I've got to pick myself back up again and be like, no, can't be bad. I can't believe I'm recording another video after this and I'm gonna be like covered in makeup. <laughs> so yes, that is still quite difficult to me to accept the fact that I do need help. Even now, I try not to accept the fact that I need help and just struggle. And then just think at the end of it, why did I just not ask for help? Um, the day, for example, I can't use my arms very good. I can't carry a lot, um, lift a lot, and then now I've only got one hand, <laughs> there's not much that I can do, and I, I picked up a multi-pack of cans, picked up by the side, but to pick it up, so heavy, but they're not just that, it's just completely ripped, and I'm like, oh, why? So, um, yeah, I try and do things by myself still, and then I realise I can't do them. Um, at home I'm fine, I'm still quite getting used to things, doing things at home where I have to do things a little bit differently but I I think at home I'm okay struggling because nobody else is here or if my kids are here they they help so much. I feel so much more comfortable asking my children help than asking either random strangers or workers. Um, even family I can find it really difficult to ask help. Um, like with anything, like if I have a hospital appointment and the kids are off school that day, I find it really hard to ask for help with the kids because they're my responsibility, I should watch them 24 seven. That's how I think. Um, so asking for help was a massive thing for me and at home, I felt my most comfortablest. So yes, now I'm like a home body. Don't leave the house very often, but I've worked around it and there's still certain things that I need to get a grasp of like for example with the wheelchair thing I am trying so hard not to want one or use one or yeah but it's it's getting really bad like at the minute um, I have to use my walking stick with my right arm and because of my left leg and I like I said I have problems with my upper arms and everything else and it's not doing so well on my shoulder. So now I can start walking and it's not the fact that I start getting pain in my knee, I start getting pain in my arm and I'm like, I can't walk with it, I can't walk without it and it's just a struggle. So yeah, I have to think about that now and going to more things. But using a walking stick, even though you can see it, not everybody sees it, if that makes sense, because it's, quite camouflaged and um, but using a wheelchair and an electrical scooter is in like yeah so for me for the whole mobility thing and using a walking stick it was a great thing because I realized how much it actually helped um I mean I can even remember afterwards um my husband we had a conversation about fibro and things like that and he said so 
what's the cure for it? And I was like, there is no cure. Um, it just means my, if I have it, the condition needs to be managed with pain meds and medication. Um, and that it's never going to go away. Um, it could get worse, it could be a bit better. Um, but at the minute, obviously things for me just keep getting a bit worse. Um, that's why I've been referred, just to see if I can get any extra support or my problem at the minute is finding extra help at home. So finding things that can help me do things by myself without as, as little pain as possible. Even though I'm in a lot of like mobility things and I see mobility things, um, I'm trying not to use so many. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the big thing. But he was like, so you're telling me you're going to be using a walking stick for the rest of your life? I was like, possibly yeah. Um, or if not, eventually get into a wheelchair. Um, which is not the greatest thing, but I can still walk. So it just means that if I have to go long distances, like I said, Disneyland again, I think I'm going to have to have a chair. Um, that's even what I did when I went when we went to Disneyland last year. I researched if they had any wheelchairs, how much it was to get out, because I was like, if I'm in a lot of pain, that's what I'm going to have to do. And I didn't, which was amazing. But then we're thinking about going again next year and yes a wheelchair might be um on that list to take with us so yeah if you're thinking about using a stick my advice would be just use it ignore everybody else around you i like to be in a bubble um which is strange but i do like people that i know walk past me and they're like going like tap me and be like hi how are you did you not see me and i'm like no I'm in a bubble. I'm not paying attention to anything off going around me. That's how I handle my anxiety and being in social environments. I'm in a bubble. Um, but yeah, use it. And I've come to the conclusion that if people gossip behind my back, that's what they're going to do. They don't know about my life. And more likely letting my life go on here, if anything, it's helped because it helps people understand the reason behind why I need it. Um, as well as people just thinking, why she got a stick when she can still walk? That that was my opinion when I first saw sticks. I thought if someone could walk without a stick, why 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 use one? Um, and then obviously I realised that I could walk walk a lot further with a walking stick um, than without it. And yeah, it does help so much. Um, and yeah, I didn't want this to be a sad thing or a feel sorry for me thing. Like I said, I don't like the attention of it. But sometimes I didn't, like at the beginning, I didn't realise how much mentally it would have an effect on me because of the struggle and asking for help thing. But also grieving the things that I used to love and I can't really do anymore. If you're thinking about it, use it, try it. It might not work. It might work, which is great. But do what I did and just get something like this. I'm actually now debating whether or not to get a not a foldable one because I use it 24 seven, but this one served its purpose and I absolutely love it. And it's really good that it folds up because I keep it on my passenger side. And when there's actually a passenger in my passenger side, the stick doesn't fit in it properly because it will just whack the other person. So what I actually do is only fold the one area and it fits on the floor. Um, so it does still help and I like the fact and the kids love the fact that when I never fold up anymore It's just with me that I don't I love the fact that I don't have to physically do anything So all I have to do is kind of like hold it up Have it straight and it's done and it's stable and I've not had any problems with it whatsoever Breaking or anything the only thing I did do, do is when I went to Disneyland I used it on the lowest setting possible and then I realized that I probably need it a little bit higher so I'm on like the the one above that now um but yeah it's absolutely great and i will recommend it at like 100 percent that if you have any knee problems or even foot problems my sister-in-law has a foot problem and i've been saying to her just get a stick trust me you don't put all your weight on that one bad thing um and i've i've noticed such a massive difference with my foot now and again it's well it's still swollen but it's not massive like before it's literally my foot and then you go that big like People were saying to me, are you sure that's not, is it grout, gout? You know what I mean? They thought it might be that, and I'm like, no, it's just really, really swollen. If you've got any questions, comments, anything like that, please comment them in the description box. Um, if you want to explain your 
circumstance, your experience, or anything like that. Also, please share in the comments because you might be watching this and might not have a similar experience and then somebody could read a comment and they'll be like, right, I have a similar experience to you or so forth. And it's nice to connect to people that have similar disabilities, similar problems, similar experiences when you don't feel like there's not a lot of people around you that have that. Um, but then when you find someone that do, you feel suddenly don't feel like you're so alone. And it is a great thing to have when you're when you're not alone, basically. So yeah, if you want to share your experience, please comment down below and yeah. But like I said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I apologize for the crying. But if you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. But I hope you have an amazing rest of the day and I will see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.